structure should be an entrance criterion and not something that needs to change. Rather, we should define disease modification in terms of um, patient orients orientated states, and it shouldn't be at a single time point. That's the other problem. You could envisage longitudinal measures of patient state using more contemporary patient-centered global measures like um, acceptable symptom states. Now measure them recurrently and kind of construct an area under the curve. You could envisage medium and long-term disease modification. The reality is if you, if you achieve good pain relief, you might actually accelerate the structural progression. So you have to look at the um, whole trajectory. Um, and so uh, th that's my, my thought about um, disease modification. That would make things hugely easier for industry and it would lower the bar and it would be a, a patient-centered um, indication of uh, disease modification. Um, with regard to enrichment, you know, I, I, I generally, I, I get it. It makes sense. We, we need to either enrich the population with progressors or somehow uh, find people who have accelerated disease. But my concern on the other hand is that um, by doing so, we might also um, uh, engender you know, a sample that's not responsive to the intervention in which there's diagnostic, there's actually um, therapeutic futility. So I think that speaks to the biomarker perspective that you, you know, you have to be cognizant of the target here. So, you know, I just put that out as a, a caveat in regards to enrichment. Could I just uh, add to what you, what you said, Tim? I think it was you that said cartilage is not a measure of the disease process. And I think I just wanted to add to that, that some of the biochemical markers, which actually are derived from the cartilage, are giving an activity measure, um, a measure of, of cartilage degeneration that's ongoing in real time. And so, and part, and, and, and part of the process, and not only that, but they serve as disease um, associated molecular patterns that activate the pro-inflammatory responses of the synovial component of the joint. So I, th I think that we underestimate the ability of the molecular measures and some of the measures Sharmila was talking about to actually measure the disease um, pathophysiology, the molecular um, um, aspects of the disease. Well, well Virginia, that, that may be so, but we, I think that's the other thing is we really have to figure out the sequence of pathological events in osteoarthritis because we're still stuck on this idea that hyaline cartilage damage is the first event. But actually, from a clinical perspective, and you look at MRIs, um, you know, the first event is, is a combination of a biomechanical insult on top of uh, tissue that may be already vulnerable, or in the case of major trauma, is healthy tissue. So the, the cartilage damage, in a sense, is, is a downstream outcome, probably, of the originated process. That doesn't mean to say that the biomarkers don't accurately reflect that. They might. Um, but it would, it would certainly improve our ability to figure out interventions if we really understood better, you know, the sequence of pathological events that happens um, in a way, I think.